about seven things. And if you are part of this church, let me just say this is what, you know, we do templates and stuff. Why do we do templates? Because we're trying to get you to rehearse the Word of God every day. So if you're visiting with us, we have an app, and you can text 54244 to uh, t New Living Word to that number, and then uh, you'll, get a, um, you'll get a link. Click that link, and you'll see our little mobile app, and 54244. Uh, New Living Word, uh, NLW, and uh, you'll get that little app. Then once, that, once the site comes up, then just save it to your desktop. And then if you click on there, you'll see uh, Dave, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and in there. And so what we're doing is, for everyone, just so that you know, what we're doing is is that we're shifting uh, what we've been looking at the fruit of the Spirit probably for a couple of months. We're shifting now uh, over to the motivational gifts and uh, because What's happening in prayer is the gifting of God is coming out of folks. Come on, wave your hand if you hear what I'm saying. Now, I'm telling you, I see it. I say, wow. So I have to keep, I have to stay and keep, and so I can keep shifting because really it's a time of teaching and training that I'm doing at 945. Uh, 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 so, uh, and I, I love it. I say, I say, oh, my God, I see the gift of God. I hear the gift of God. So we're moving to the motivational gifts. And, uh, and, and uh, so, but that's why we do it. So in other words, in other words, in other words, so whether there's a template out there or not, you ought to have templates all over the place. This thing right here is full of them. When I come in here and pray, God show me one thing. He should give me one word, and I get to seeking that thing out. I go, let me add that passage. Let me add this passage. Let me add that passage. Let me add this passage. And so now I'm walking all around the building at home or wherever I am, and I'm just speaking the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And so, that's why we do that. So from Brother Thompson's message, I said, let me, let me put together, amen, a template. Let me put together uh, uh, some characteristics of faith, what our faith should be going to, amen. So I got about seven things, and then the last one I'm going to share in today's message, all right? So the first thing, if you would put those up for me, and we'll give you guys to take a chance. You go ahead and take a picture of that if you like. It's about three more that's going to come, is that, number one, the power of my faith is changing. The power of my faith is changing. You know, how is the power of our faith changing? Because you exercise your faith. Milk is for those who are unskillful. Amen. See, now you're in an hour of struggle. You, folk, the stuff today will kill you. If it don't kill you, it'll drive you crazy. You, you, you need real faith. You don't need no religion. It ain't gonna help you. You need some. You need to know what God is doing in this hour. How about I got one witness? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So our faith should be changing. So you heard what I said, what's happening in prayer. We're seeing now the gift of God come out of folk. I, I hear folk praying in the spirit. I hear them prophesying every time. I say, the rascals prophesying. I don't know if they know it or not. You know? And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and so, you know, and, and, and I'm telling you, it is pouring over into everything. You, we could just line up testimonies every Sunday. You know, it's pouring over and everything. So it's wonderful. So, so what should happen? The power of your faith should be what? Changing. The power of my faith. Amen. The presence of my faith will manifest. You need to be sure of that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You need to be sure that the presence of my faith will manifest. The Bible says that, uh, uh, that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he's able to perform. Come on, thank the Lord. Amen. You need to know for sure. Wait a minute. Uh -uh, the presence of my faith will manifest. You need to know that. Amen. In G you need to be fully persuaded in Jesus' name. Uh, number three, the proclamation of my faith will be obeyed. The proclamation of my faith. Didn't Jesus tell them in Mark 11? He said, have faith in God. He said, for verily I say unto you, he, uh, that whosoever shall say to the mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in their heart, but believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he said. Oh, come on, thank God. Ain't that something? Amen. You need to know I ain't just talking. Come on. I'm proclaiming, I'm declaring, I'm decreeing. Here's what's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? Glory to God. Isn't that what, isn't that what uh, 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 I'm trying to, Elijah. Amen. Elijah said, it ain't going to rain. The Bible said, it's word, it ain't rain. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because you want to, 
You want to join up so tight to the Lord, to God. That's why I'm on my knees. We're singing the presence, your presence is, I mean, it's everything. It's like heaven. I'm trying to tell you. That's why he's trying to teach you, trying to show you. Come on up here, boy. Let me show you this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. So that your proclamation will be power in Jesus' name. Ooh, what about number four? The pleasure of my faith will live in abundance. Lord Jesus. What the world we still doing tripping over tithes and stuff. You, I mean, if you if you still tripping over tithes, you a babe. If all you're doing is tithing, you still need to grow. You don't know how God do stuff with money. I, I ain't even know nothing about first fruits. And I kept putting God to the test. All right, God, I want to make $1,000 a week. All right, start tithing on it. All right, 55000 That's 52000 55000 No. <laughs> I like no, that. That could that no. Let me try it again. Let me try it again. Let me see if I can make sixty. Start tithing on that. Sixty-two. <laughs> I was making so much money, God had to shut it down and kick me out because I wasn't coming to no ministry. I'm like, I ain't going to no. <laughs> God bless like this. I ain't going to no ministry, right? Because again, I messed up. I thought it was. I thought it was the career. Uh-uh, it was a covenant with God. Come on, have I got a witness in here? Amen, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Because that's just the nature of God. We beg you, ooh, Lord, bless, ooh, Lord, oh, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord. God, what, what, you, what you doing? He said, that's my nature, abundance. Why are you going on like that? Lord, I'm going to get it today. Now, I need you to bless me. I'm like, wait a minute, where'd you get that from? It's the nature of God. And of course, we went through that with Abraham. You saw everything he went through. What did it end up? Abundance. Abundance. Amen. Because why? You're in covenant with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Number five. Number five. The personality of my faith will always be supernatural. Take time. Take, take a picture of that one right there. The personality of my faith will always be supernatural. What happened? Abraham had to speak those things that be not as though they were. The personality of my faith will always be what? Supernatural, not natural. We get to bargaining with God. All right, God, now if you do this, I'll do this. Now, God, I can do this. Now, if you just do this. How, who are you talking to? You talking to little G? Are you talking to Big G? Because Big G is God Almighty. Come on, right? Amen. Big G is God Almighty. So guess what you can ask him for? Everything. Lord, I need it all. Come on, amen. I need it all, Lord. He paid it all, didn't he? Tank said it. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I want to go just a little bit further. Uh, number six, the programming of my faith is over. Let me say, now, what do you mean? What do you mean? A whole lot of folk are disappointed because when I did this and God didn't do that, he said, no, I ain't teaching you programming for you to fall in love with the program or the method. I'm trying to get you to know me. Do y'all remember the seven sons of Sceva? Sceva, what'd they say? They, they followed the program, didn't they? They said, we adjure you demons. In the name of that man named Jesus that Paul talking about. <laughs> so we're going to do the same thing Paul did. The demon said, now wait, hold a minute. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Didn't he? That demon said, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Now, who, who you is? <laughs> that was a hood demon. Who you is? What your name is? Right? So, so <laughs> praise the Lord. So you understand what I'm saying? See, you, 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 even when we're talking about taking authority, when you learn how to take authority, you ain't going to say, I'm taking authority. You say, get out. <laughs> you ain't got to say, but we start off with you. You got training wheels. So you go out there, there's an app, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, uh, you go out to a uh, uh, to mobile app and, and you'll see uh, there's, a, there's a thing that says taking authority. The reason why we did that is so people could get a template of how you take authority. Amen. But guess what? I ain't, I ain't got to say I'm taking authority. They already know. Merv here. Shh. 
Because guess what? They know who got authority, who don't. Do you understand? See, so so what we and so even what we're doing in prayer, I, I'm trying to tell them, I'm helping us understand that folks, I'm taking you along, giving you a bite, giving you this bite, giving that bite. Don't fall in love with what we just showed you. See, because the whole idea is that you fall in love with the Lord. The whole idea is you get to know him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so the programming of my faith, I tried it. I remember what I did that before. And I, come on, folks. Lord said, come on up here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And then what I want to share with you today, Lord Jesus. Y'all ready for this? Number seven. Look at number seven. Would you put that up there one more time? The prosperity of my faith will shake folks up. Come on, have I got one witness in here today? <laughs> Did you say? Now I just showed you. I just shared with you at the beginning. What are we t we talking about? The mountain of the house of God should be where? Atop all the mountains, all of them, all of them. You name it, all of them. God is saying, and if you come on up here, I'm going to show you. Amen. So I want to I want to take a moment uh, today uh, out of uh, Genesis the 26th chapter, and we're going to stay right there. Okay. This is today's message, today's message, the prosperity of my faith will shake folks up. Amen. Now, uh, let's, let's, let's take a look, if, if I can do for a little text maybe, if I can. Uh, Genesis, the 26th chapter, verse 12 through 15. Genesis 26, 12 through 15. Uh, the Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land. And received the same year, what? A hundredfold. You thought that was it. The Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. <laughs> All right? Verse 13. Glory to God. And the man, now, oh my God, wasn't that enough in 12? Not for God. See, God is blessing according to what he called you to. According to the influence he's given you. According to the impact that he wants you to have. So on top of that, and the man waxed great. And went forward and grew until it became what? Very great. Who told you to stop? Amen. Verse 14. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to read all that. Uh, for he had possessions of flocks, uh, possessions of herds, great store of servants. Uh, and the Philistines what? Envied him. See what happened? See what happened? That prosperity, what did it do? It shook some folks up. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, for all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines, what? Stopped them up and filled them up with earth. You see what, what happened? That prosperity did what? You understand? Now, let's get ready. Let's go. Amen. In this 26th chapter, you, you, we're going to stay right here in the 26th chapter of Genesis. In this 26th chapter, how did this man get all of this? He got it based on the promise of God and the covenant of God. The promise of God and the covenant of God. Now, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, I'm in this season where I'm really going in this word. I want you to, want you to take note of this. Amen? So, look what God tells, uh, Ab what he tells Isaac in verse 1, and we're going to read all the way to verse 5. Amen? Verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible said, and there was a what? Famine in the land beside the first famine. That was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac uh, went with Abimelech, king of the Philistines, to Gerar. All right, verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down, don't go to Egypt this time. Dwell in the land where I, I, was, I will tell thee of. Verse 3. All right, he says, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Amen. How far am I going to verse 5? All right, verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, will give unto thy seed as all these countries, and, all, and, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, and, uh, and my commandments and my statutes and my laws. So looking at the conditions, Isaac did not sow in the condition. He didn't sow according to the condition because it would make no sense. 
There's nothing going to grow in a famine. It didn't make sense. What did Isaac do? Isaac sold based on God's word. Isaac sold based on the covenant of God. Isaac sold based on God's divine inheritance for him. Who am I talking to today? See, I'm telling you, there's a powerful thing that your mom and daddy didn't have to have no money, but if they obeyed the Lord. Do you understand? Then all these blessings come upon you in Jesus' name. And then, and then I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. You don't know. You might be the patriarch. <laughs> don't hate on mom and daddy. You might be the patriarch, fellas. Don't hate on mom and daddy. Uh, 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 honey child, you might be the first. Amen? And if God called you to be the first, and if God said he'll do it, you got to believe that in Jesus' name. Have I got a witness today? Amen. So you sow what? Based on God. You heard what the woman said. She said, no, sir, God's been too good to me. He's been, good to, been too good to me. My wife and I had to live through that. We had to live, uh, amen, as we, uh, in following the Lord, left this career doing good, left this career doing good. I'm saying, come on, Lord. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know if I can trust you or not. <laughs> Look like you keep leaving me in the cold. Uh-uh, stay with him. Amen. Stay with the promise. Stay with the covenant of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, and so as a result, Isaac, he did not sow uh, in the land. Uh, 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 because of the condition, he could not because it was a famine. And then God said, "Don't go, to, don't go borrow nothing. Don't go down to Egypt. Don't you go borrow a thing." He said, "Because why? I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply not only you but your seed, boy." He said, "And all this that you see, I'm about to give this to you." Now that don't make no sense when this man is, is going through the land trying to find help for himself. Amen. But God is going to prove it to him. God let him know you've been connected to a covenant greater than any situation, greater than any country, greater than any leader. You've been connected to a covenant with God Almighty. Come on, give him a thanks in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So as we just read in our text, what did Isaac do in verse 12? He sold. And look what happened. He sold <laughs> and received a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, verse 13, and grew until he became great. And he had possessions of, 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 of uh, herds and, and great store of servants. Now, now, what did we say the title of this message is? Is that the, my, uh, the prosperity of my faith is going to what? Shake folks up. <laughs> oh, 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 Lord. Guess what's holding a whole lot of y'all back? You too scared. You too scared for folks to talk about you. Now you didn't know what they were doing when they were talking about you. The Bible says it. He said, "Blessed are you when men revile you and say all manner of evil against you." Oh, come on, are y'all hear me? What are they doing? All they doing is putting the blessing on you. Come on, are y'all with me? Say the blessings on me. That's all they doing. Amen. But we get so caught up being social media driven. And living by folks' opinion instead of living by faith in God. And the minute somebody gives an opinion that's contrary to God, if you're not going to stand with the Lord, you're going to go with that opinion. But I'm telling you today, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Because God called you to divide an inheritance today. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what happened here? What happened here, amen, in verse 17? In verse 17, it, some folk got stirred up. Verse 17 says, Isaac, what did he do? He departed and pitched a tent in Gerar uh, there, and he dig a well. And, 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 and what happened? Uh, he dig the well. They had stopped up and all that stuff. And, and, and in verse, all the way down to verse 20, they found water. Amen. But guess what else they found in verse 20? Strife. <laughs> see, see. You got to be prepared for your uh, prosperity to create strife. We keep walking around saying, I don't mean no harm. Well, it don't matter whether you mean harm or not. You, I think it's a cop-out. You scared. I don't mean no harm. I don't want to hurt nobody. You're going to hurt them anyway. Why? Because they've already put a limit on you. 
You're too blessed already. What you need more for? You understand? They don't know the God that you serve. They don't know the call that's on your life. They don't know the impact that God wants you to have. They don't know who all God has called you to teach or to help. Come on, Tank. Didn't he said, he said, God said, help him. You don't know. You don't know. Amen. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Amen. When God begins to bless you, there's some Isaac going to ride up in your life. There's some strife. But you know what you do? Keep doing like Isaac. Just keep it moving. <laughs> See why? You don't fight battles that's already won. I ain't getting no help on that one. I ain't going to get no help. You're too busy trying to prove something to folk that can't stop nothing that God is doing in your life. Miss Anna Jane said, I sure you better than I can tell you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let them see it and let them talk about it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now watch this. Glory to God. Amen. You, you see, 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 this morning in prayer, I can't remember who it was. Somebody over here seemed like over here as well. They kept saying, "Keep just press on. Just push on. Don't listen to what folks say. I said, now these folks, they don't have a clue. They, they just prophesied it over what I got to preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, so, so not only does strife come, but in verse 21, 21, the Bible says, and they digged another well. See, you got to keep digging, y'all. Call your name. Say, keep digging. You got to keep digging. You got to keep digging. You got to keep digging. And, 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 and they dig another well, and, and, and look what happened. And they strove also for that. And he called that one Sitna, 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 Sitna. He called that uh, 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 Sitna, verse 21. Just go back to verse 21. Amen. Uh, he called that one Sitna. What's Sitna? Sitna means opposition. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get y'all to see now. Do, do you sure you want to be blessed like this? Strife, opposition. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This strong opposition, this opposition by letter. Opposition by letter. Here's the rule. You can't do that. Opposition by letter. But aren't you glad what Jesus did? The Bible says that, Colossians says that Jesus hung on that cross. And I'm telling you what Jesus did Every hand ordinance that was written against you, come on, you ought to thank the Lord. He took care of that in Jesus' name. Just erased that thing with his blood in the name of Jesus. That's why you just got to keep on digging. Say keep digging, keep digging, keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. You face, op you face strife, you face opposition. But what do you do? Keep digging, keep digging. Why? Because you got a promise. You got an inheritance. Come on, shout keep digging. You got a promise. You got the word of the Lord. Say, keep digging. Keep digging. Don't go back fighting the battles that already won. Go forward. Keep digging. Say, keep digging. Because if you keep digging, watch what's going to happen in verse 22. So what did he do? He kept digging. Verse 22, he removed from there. And what did he do? Dug another one. Amen. He dug another well. And, uh, and the Bible says, watch what happened. For they strove not. Ooh, Lord. And he called the name of that, what? Rehoboth, uh, for, uh, and said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be, what? Fruitful in the land. Now, 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 now I'm about to talk to you. I, this was just getting warm. I'm about to talk to you. Right here is Rehoboth where most of the saints make the mistake. Well, you say, what you mean, Pastor? Right here when the blessing begin to come in your life, you sit still. But guess what Rehoboth means? Streets. You're supposed to be moving on through there. And what do we do? The moment we've come out of, we face strife, we face contention, and now God gave me peace. I know this where I'm supposed to be. God said, no, no, you just got to move. I, you just getting started. Now he's saying, come on up here now, let me show you something. Do you understand? Because Rehoboth means street. 
Rehoboth means avenue. You need to be passing on through. And, and watch what happens. Watch what happens when, when he does this. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Verse 23. He didn't stay at Rehoboth. Watch what he did in verse 23. Ain't it something when you read this word? The Bible said he went thence to Bathsheba, which means oath. There's something greater than the blessing, saints. It's the oath that you have with God. Where did you get that blessing from you got? The oath of God. How did you overcome that strife? The oath, of, the, the oath, the promise, and the inheritance of God. How did you overcome it? And what happens is we make the mistake and stay there, and God say, no, come on up here now. You finally got where I was trying to get you, but I'm trying to get you now to show you what you need to do next. Because now you're in a place you've never been. You've done something that you've never done. You don't know what you're doing. Come on up here and let me show you. Now, how many folks have you seen made the biggest mess in their life when the blessing came? Folk ain't in church today. Why? Too blessed. Give tithes. I gave tithes when I was making $1,000. I can't give tithes on this 100000 I ain't talking to nobody, but them folks. Let me let me see. <laughs> you kept asking for a hundred thousand, and God gave it to you. Now you say you can't. What? You ask God, God, I'm gonna give a thousand for first fruits. You gave a thousand for first fruits. The doors flew up like crazy. The windows of heaven poured out like crazy. And now, now first fruits come around again. No, you ain't got no thousand dollars for the Lord. What kicked the door open? The promise. What kicked the door open? The oath. What kicked the door open? The inheritance. What you doing sitting there? In an avenue where you're supposed to keep moving. You're supposed to come on. Lord, I'm here. Show me. Show me. Show me. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all see this? Oh, I got you now. You thought we were going to stay at Rehoboth, didn't you? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ain't, there is nothing. I'm going to say it like I was about to say it. Ain't nothing more important than your relationship with the Lord. Come on. Have I got a witness here? Ooh, I don't care. I don't care. Listen, listen. I don't care how much God bless you, temporary. I don't care how many times God's healed this body right here. Guess what? Temporary. You understand? But I've got a living hope. I've got the gift of God, eternal life. Come on, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Do y'all see this? Amen. See, what was supposed to happen, so guess what, guess what Isaac does? Isaac said, uh-uh, I'm going for the oath. Let me go back to what got me here. I'm going to where? Bathsheba. I'm going to the oath. And look what God does in verse 24. And the Lord, see, he said, come on up here and I'm going to show you. Look at verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, what? I am the God of thy father. Fear not, for I'm with you. And I'll bless you and multiply your seed. Multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And the Bible says, look what he did. And he built an altar there and upon the name of the Lord and pitched a tent there, and there Isaac's servant digged a well. Now look, look what he did, folks. Look, now, now, I want you to see a few things right here. That, that's all right, that's good. I want you to see a few things. Look at this. I want you to see a few things. Number one, Isaac didn't stop in Rehoboth because it's an avenue. I'm just passing through. Come on, I'm going to get all that belongs to me, but I'm going to the Lord. Come on, y'all hear me? Amen. I'm going to see the king. Praise the Lord. And, and when he did, now what happened? God comes back to reaffirm, to confirm the oath. You've come through strife. You've come through uh, 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 opposition. You've come through all of that. And now you've come to a place where I blessed you. And you're not trusting in the blessing, but I'm trusting in the living God who gives me all things richly to enjoy. Are y'all with me? And now this living God is saying, now come on up, boy. Now I'm going to show you something shown up. You said you're going to show me something after I became great, very great, after I got a hundredfold. And you still got something to show me? He said, boy, come on, let me show you something. You said, can't nothing be better than that. I'm going to show you in a minute. <laughs> because now what God did is now about to testify. 
Remember why I said God said we're to be in the top of the mountain? He said because people are going to come. And they're going to say, teach us the way of the Lord. Teach us his way. Saints, that's the most important thing right there. Because everything that we're living on, including this earth, is temporary. Ask them folks in Florida who spent their life earnings. Are y'all hearing me? To live in paradise. Folk, that's a price to live in paradise. Did y'all know that? <laughs> that's a price. Amen. I don't care. You can look all over the map. What's going to happen in every tropical place? Folk, you're going to have storms like you ain't never had in your life. And when folk move, I don't know what they're thinking. Can't buy insurance. Okay, you still going to move? That's a price to pay to live in paradise, say. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you didn't know? You're going to be with the Lord. You didn't know the price that was paid? The Bible said he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon it. With his stripes, we're healed. You ought to thank the Lord because a price had to be paid. Oh, give him thanks. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You don't perish, but somebody had to perish. There's a price to live in paradise. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And God comes now. And what does he do? He reaffirms the oath. And now it's beginning to testify. Now the folk that were against you are now for you. Come on. If they got to change the rule. Come on, y'all with me, saints. Y'all are here. You ain't hang on long enough. You thought just because I got a little money and a little power. God said, no. He said, one day of my favor is better than a thousand years. One day of my favor. Are y'all with me? Now the folks that were against him, they now testify for him. Come on, take a look at Abimelech in verse 28. Abimelech came, Isaac thinking they're going to come and jump on him. What y'all coming to do? Y'all, well, hey, we good, man. What's going on? Look what they said now about Isaac. They said, say they said. You understand? We so afraid of what? They said. But look what the favor of God is doing. When you hang on and go back to the oath, look what the favor of God does. They said, we, 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 we saw certainly. Huh? That the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there uh, be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee. And let us make a covenant with thee. Look what they said, verse 29. That thou will do us no hurt, and we will not touch thee. Come on. And we have done nothing unto thee but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou Thou art now blessed of the Lord. You ought to thank God right now. The thing that you were so afraid of, amen, the people that you were so afraid of, we don't know who they are, but I claim we're scared of what they say. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I claim, you know what they say. We even say it, don't we? Who they? <laughs> who they is? <laughs> But God knows, listen, 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 listen. I've been, I've been sharing with folks, I'm saying, folks, respect yourself. Respect yourself. When COVID came through, because every morning I got up, I got in the shower, I put on my clothes like I was going to school, I did not sit around the house in no pajamas. Why? Because I respect myself. Are y'all with me? Every day I got up, had to go to class. I didn't go to class. I was online. Folks in bed, folks half sleep. Not me. Not me. Why? Because what happens is we don't realize that most of our life is being shaped by day, and we don't even know who they are. I better put on some clothes. They might see me. Who they? I better do something in my hair because they might see I ain't, worried, I ain't got to worry about doing that. They ain't going to see me. I mean, what do you mean? Your life is based on they. But God said, no, sir. He said, it's in him that I live and move and have my being. Come on, give him thanks now. Are y'all with me? 
Glory to God. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Come on, thank him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look what they said. They changed when he went back to the covenant. Now, he got all of the blessing. Now he got the peace of God. Why? Because he didn't stay at Rehoboth. He didn't stay in the area because he had blessing and peace. What was most important to him was pleasing the Lord. Are y'all with me, saints of God? Amen. So what did they do? They didn't stop digging because God didn't say stop digging. The Bible said even after all of this came, guess what they did? They dug another well. We better go down and see what this well is about right here because this is going to be a very important piece. So y'all hear me? Watch this. Glory to God. Verse 32. The Bible says, verse 32, the Bible says, And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well that they did. Guess what they said? We found water. <laughs> see, 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 we keep making the mistake thinking it's about the place. No, the only, the only thing, that, the, 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 the significance about the place is where you stand with the Lord. The Bible said we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are right with him and right beside him. We did not earn it. We did not deserve it. But Christ blessed us. So wherever I go, as long as I'm right with God, it's the right place. It's the right. Oh, y'all better thank the Lord. Oh, God. It's not the locale, but it's the position that you have with the Lord. Blessed are the righteousness. The house of the righteous shall be filled with sin. Oh, y'all ought to give it. Oh, my God, in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, thank the Lord. Bless him in Jesus' name. You hear what I'm saying? You got to go back to the old saints of God. Come on, sit down for a minute, Lord Jesus. See, see, you, you're stopping in Rehoboth because you got a little blessing. You're stopping in Rehoboth. They ain't got to fight no more. God said, yeah, yeah, but I ain't, you ain't got to fight. That didn't, did, you not fighting did not determine what your destination. I determined your destination. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. What did he say? We found water. The Bible says, and I want you to see this in verse 33. I want you to see it. I want you to put it on the screen. I want you to put it on the screen. I can say it, but I want you to see it for a reason. The Bible said, and he called it what? Shabon. What is Shabon? Now, wait a minute. Let me read the whole thing first. The Bible says, he called it Shabon. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. So what did he do? He went back to the old. He did not stop at the blessing. He did not stop at the promotion because that was not the place assigned to stop. Rehoboth means street. Rehoboth means avenue. In other words, the God that you serve, just because you got a blessing, the Bible said it is, it is him, amen, the one that blesses us with what our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the imagination of my heart, but the Holy Ghost will reveal it. You might experience abundance like you never experienced, but the Holy Ghost will reveal experience that you never imagined. The Holy Ghost will reveal the wealth and the prosperity that you would never believe. You will say, that's too good to be true. But I got news for you today. It is good and it is true. Come on, thank the Lord today. Oh, God, y'all better thank him. Oh, you better give him glory because I ain't finished yet. You, oh, you better go on and take him by faith because now I'm getting ready to show you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. You see the mistake that we made? See the mistake? Sit down for a minute. Amen. Because you need to see what this name means. Amen. You need to see what this name means. What did he call it? He called it Sheba. You know what Sheba means? Seven. <laughs> seven completion not only completion but seven is what Sabbath. in other words god is saying he's saying 
You've been doing all the work. You've been, you've been going through the strife. You've gone through the opposition. And I gave you a place to test you. I gave you a place to see whether you would serve me or serve your position or serve your wealth. Ain't it something how God blesses with a house and the house don't serve us, we serve it. God blesses with a nice little ride. Come on now. Come on, look better than somebody else ride. Amen. It ain't it something? If it rains, I can't drive my ride in the rain. But you go out in the rain. I ain't going to get no help on that one. Ain't it the craziest thing how folks are so crazy over tennis shoes? God made shoes, gave somebody the idea for shoes to protect your feet. And instead of the shoe protecting your foot, you protecting the shoe. I ain't going to get no help on that one. Why? It was a test to see whether you would serve God or serve the thing that God gave you. But I'm so glad today that we don't serve those things. We don't serve a dead God, but we serve the living God, the God of life, the God of joy, the God of peace, the God that blesses us. Oh, give him thanks, saints of God. Come on, thank the Lord in this place. Come on, thank the Lord. Oh, God, let me come on this floor. Let me come on this floor so I can shut this thing down. Glory to God. You see, what's significant with Sabbath is that God said, you have worked it like I told you to work it. And what you worked, you worked your faith, and your faith has blessed you. But all of the blessing was to testify of me. Instead of the blessing testifying of you, it's supposed to testify of me. So when, when you're blessed and you know you're blessed, it's because you're not satisfied. Why? Because those things can't satisfy the place that only God can satisfy. Have I got a witness in this house? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Only God can satisfy that place. Are y'all with me? And when you pass that test and you say, nope, I don't care what the accountant says. God says that when I bring the tithe, he will open up the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing that I don't have room to receive. I will rebuke the devourer for you. Oh, you ought to give him praise now. I don't care how much you can give me, but because I have a covenant with the Lord, I'm going to give God what belongs to him. Who have I got a witness in here today? Have I got a witness in here today? God, give us revelation of the first fruits. And if you're in this church, you know what the first fruits have done for your life. Folk have gotten promotions. Debts have been canceled. Are y'all hearing me? Increase like crazy. Amen. What is that? That's a test. It's called the first fruits because you're supposed to put God first. Come on, thank the Lord. How is it that when God bless us, we lost the revelation of the first and instead of putting God first we put it first but I'm so glad today that some people are more concerned about their relationship the eternal relationship with God that no temporary thing will stop them have I got a witness in this house have I got a witness in this house because where God is taking you before in all of that that you've got to this point, you've been the one working. But what God says, not only do you have that blessing, but now favor the cause they to testify of you. That would be enough 
But God said, no, no, no. He says, now what's about to happen? You about to leave your labor and come into mine. You about to thank him right now. It's called a Sabbath. God said, now it's time. You work, now I'm going to work. Shall work, Lord. Shall work, work. Shall work, work, work. Shall work, 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 work. Come on, give him a praise now. Praise him now. It's time for the Lord to go to work. It's time for the Lord. Oh, y'all ought to thank him today. Don't you remember what happened in the Sabbath? God said, now you work six days. He said, but when I work, I'll double what you do. Oh, come on. Are y'all hearing this today? Come on. Are y'all hearing me? He said, you let the land rest. He said, for three years. He said, you let the land rest. Don't even harvest no food. Don't you even worry about it. He said, because I'm going to bless you until the next harvest comes. Y'all ought to thank him right now. Show work. Show work. Show work, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 